Hey everybody, it is Telly Telicious, and after this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 4, I'm gonna need some peace for Latrice. Oh my goodness, well hey everybody, and so we just finished watching the episode where we're doing Sex in the City knockoff, Sex in the Kitty Girl 3. So basically it had all the girls doing a character from the show. So basically like the shock of the season happened last week, and before I even start this episode, you know there's been a lot of backlash on the Drag Race fans this week. And so let me just say two things. Firstly, that is wrong for everybody out there if you have any issue with someone's race. All the queens, you know, I think it's great that this season had trans queens, had so many queens of color, it had so much representation. I thought this season was so great for that. With that being said, I also wanted to talk about the Silky situation where I was reading this vlog that was saying uh, what is like the worst things the Drag Race fans have done and they were talking about uh, fat shaming Silky and I have to admit mentioning her fupa in the Meet the Queens video that I did was a little bit of fat shaming but the truth is she did say some nasty things about Say Kevi from Camp Wana Kiki on YouTube a different drag show and I didn't like how transphobic it was, and so that's why I don't like Silky. With that all out of the way, it did get to write in at another question the fans were asking or memeing on the internet was when Manila saw Latrice go home, she was boohoo crying, you know, she was like super upset. And then when Latrice was saved, she's like, yeah girl, I'm here, you know. And like Monique just straight up asked it right at the beginning of the episode. And I thought that was wonderful that it wasn't just brushed under the rug that it was actually discussed. I thought that was super important to do. But so anyways, then it got into it, and as much as I was missing Manila in the episode, you know what, the show still went on. It wasn't canceled, you know? And I, again, like I don't know much about Sex in the City. I was a little too young to be watching that. The queens that did not do good in the challenge was Naomi, who didn't look like Sarah Jessica Parker. Like her makeup was like this like fierce bitch. Like it, and Sarah Jessica Parker just I mean, to her, she's more natural than that. And she didn't look it, she didn't act it, so Naomi was not doing good. Um, Monet was not doing good, and uh, Latrice was the safe one. She was the one in the middle. And then the two ones that were doing good was Trinity and Monique. Then when it came to the runways, Trinity's Catwoman outfit was amazing, as was Monique's heart, which was almost the same thing as Trinity, except with a Puss in Boots twist. And then Latrice's runway outfit. I saw that shit, and I did not like it. Like, I get the idea of the painted part of the lion. That part was beautiful. But the fact that right down the center, it goes from one animal here to one animal here. I didn't exactly understand the concept of the outfit. Like, maybe it's one of the ones where you see it in person and you're like, damn! But on TV, I didn't get that. Oh yeah, and Monet Exchange, on the runway, she looked like she was doing some disgusting furry porn with Miss Piggy involved. Like, she, it was so bad. It was like, I didn't even know what I was looking at. Like, some people were saying it looked like a mouse girl. She didn't look like a cat, that's for sure. Oh, and then Naomi came out looking like a crazy cat lady with like fake cats on her, and then it was this pastel look, and it was okay, but it didn't stand out to me compared to the other queens, and you know, in this kind of challenge, it's like you need to take it over the, over the, over the top or else you're just not gonna stand out. It's, I mean, there's so many fierce looks you know are gonna come down, so you don't wanna be that one where it's like, oh, I don't know about that runway. But so then it was revealed that Monique Hart and Trinity the Tuck were the top two. And Monique, she finally was there. Like, I felt like she was a little humble about it, you know, or I don't know exactly what she was feeling, but you know, she just was kind of very reserved. When they got backstage, Monique almost didn't even care about the other queens who she was interviewing. She's like, let me do my mug because I need to switch this up. I'm about to do a different look. And so then, you know, all of them were like throwing Latrice under the bus to Trinity and then Trinity brought it up to Latrice and then Latrice went back to the other bitches and then they're like, well, we gotta say somebody so we said you. And then they get to the stage and Trinity and Monique are in similar outfits, like similar silhouettes. 
uh, both with reveals that work completely differently. So like Trinity's, the, the dress came off to reveal her panties and Monique's was kind of like the Stacey Lane Matthews hair from season three where she kept pulling out each track and throwing it on the floor. Like there was just a little reveal here, a little reveal there. The more effective performance was Trinity and she won. The bottom three at this time was Latrice, Monet, and Naomi. And all of them had a good reason to go home. Like Latrice, she already went home, except then she fought herself back and she did better. Monet, she was doing okay and then she kind of wasn't. Like who knows what her track record is right now. And people were saying that she was tied for the most wins with Trinity, but now Trinity got this final win. So that means that she's bumped down Monet from the tie spot with her. Naomi, like, Trinity had a good reason to send her home, even though they're already at the end of the game, it's kind of like, well, I can't trust Naomi. But at this point, you don't even need to trust anybody anymore because you're at the final episode. And so anyways, also, we saw the little preview of the final episode where they bring back Chad, Trixie, and Alaska, and they're gonna do some kind of crowning at the end. Who knows, are they going to bring back all the queens to judge again like they did last time? Are they just going to bring back Stacey Lane Matthews to choose the top two? Now that would be really awesome. I don't know what to expect from this last episode. I know they're about to do some music video or something like that. You know they're about to do some finale bullshit like they do. But for me, who I'm rooting for at this point is Team Trinity. If it's not her, I honestly don't even know who I would expect it to be. I don't want it to be Naomi because I just don't feel she's stood out this whole time. Monet, I feel she'd be a, a, a good one. And Monique, I do love Monique, except I feel like she was kind of like the sidekick of the season who comes with the catchphrases, okay America? But so who I'm voting for right now is Trinity to win because I love Trinity Taylor. She went from being on her season, season nine, to being the most underrated one in the Meet the Queens, like when her look was revealed and people were saying, oh, she's first to go home, to this, where all the fans have gone from thinking that, to thinking, oh, she's the nasty bitch, to thinking, oh, she needs to win. That, now that is the dream storyline that you wanna have if you didn't even see it coming. But so that is my thoughts for this week, everybody. This was a jumbled mess episode, but you know what? There was a lot to talk about and there was not a lot to talk about at the same time because this episode was not half the drama the previous episode was, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I'm gonna see you guys next week for the grand finale of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 4, winner revealed. Who will it be? Nobody knows. <laughs>